Hey, it's Woodman here. It's Friday, July 12th, 2024. I wanted to talk to you today about soul ties. You may have heard the term before. Soul ties are very real. You can develop a soul tie either sexually or even platonically. And even when you do have sex with another person, while there's a good chance of a soul tie, you may not necessarily develop a soul tie. But because the likelihood is more likely than not likely, usually many cultures have restrictions against premarital sex for this reason. Soul ties can also have uh, quite a few disadvantages and uh, some unintended results. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the signs of when a person has a soul tie. So here are 17 signs that you might have a soul tie with another person. The first sign is emotional dependency. This would have you feeling like you cannot live without the other person. You'll be longing for the other person. The second is obsession, is that you constantly are thinking about this other person, even to the point of distraction. The third is dreams and visions. Sometimes you may have frequent dreams about the person or feeling their presence, even when they are not physically there with you. The fourth is physical symptoms. You may experience some forms of physical pain or discomfort when thinking about the person. Number five is difficulty moving on. You're struggling to get over the person, even though the relationship has ended. Number six, mood swings. Your mood is heavily influenced by the person's actions and emotions. Number seven, behavior changes. You're acting out of character. You're doing things that you wouldn't normally do because you are somehow still affected by this person. Number eight, loss of your personal identity. And this is a big one. Feeling like you've lost your sense of who you are, who your identity is. And that really becomes big if you develop a lot of soul ties with a lot of people. Then you don't know who you are. Strong urges. Feeling powerful urges to be or communicate with a person. Telepathic connection. Sensing what the other person is feeling or thinking without communication. Number 11, physical attraction. An intense physical attraction that almost feels magnetic. Number 12, constant comparisons. You're constantly comparing everyone else to this person, finding it hard to find anyone else that is suitable. In other words, you may start going on a hunt of trying to find a way to get over the person, replace the person, but then you just create more soul ties and you don't find what you want. Regret and guilt. Feeling regretful and guilty when trying to move on or detach from this other person. Dependency. Relying on the person for emotional stability and happiness. And that's really a bad thing because that leads to codependency, which is not good. Feelings of incompleteness. You feel uh, like you're not whole, you're incomplete, or you're empty without the person. Number 16, resentment and anger. You have strong strong feelings of resentment or anger towards the person, right? You're like, why why won't you come back to me? You know, you, you really get upset, right? And then feeling stuck. You feel like you cannot move forward in life because you're still stuck or fixated on the bond. So let's talk about how sex plays into the topic of soul ties. And I mentioned it briefly earlier, but let's talk a little more about that. Sexual intercourse involves deep physical and emotional connection, which can lead to the formation of a soul tie. During sex, the exchange of energy and intimacy creates a powerful bond that can intertwine the souls of the individuals involved. This connection is reinforced by the release of oxytocin and other bonding hormones, which make it extremely difficult to detach emotionally and spiritually from the person. So what about situations where sex is not a factor? How does how do soul ties develop then? Well, it can develop through unrequited love. Unrequited love can create a soul tie through the intense emotional investment one person has another. When feelings of love are not reciprocated, the longing and emotional attachment <coughs> excuse me, can still form a strong bond. This connection can be difficult to break because the person experiencing the unrequited love often idealizes and obsessively thinks about the object of their affection, reinforcing the tie. In other words, you know, you're still thinking of them in this way that they're ideal, you want them back, you know, the, the, the tie continues on even though nothing really is going on. 
What about platonic, platonic forms of souls? I really can't talk today. Friendship bonds. Deep bonds uh, formed through shared experiences and emotional support can lead to soul ties without sex. Family ties. Strong bonds with family members that are rooted in love, care, and shared history also will create soul ties. Mentorship. Relationships with mentors or teachers can have a significant impact on personal growth and development. Spiritual connections. Bonds formed with spiritual leaders, communities through shared beliefs and practices. So, sex isn't the be-all, end-all of soul ties, but sex is a very common form of getting into a soul tie. Now, this is why casual sex can become a problem, because here's the issue. Having too many soul ties can lead to shared karma. Soul ties can lead to shared karma because the emotional and spiritual connections between individuals can influence each other's destiny, their energy, and their life paths. When two people are extremely bonded, their actions and experiences can impact each other, leading to shared consequences and karmic lessons. The intertwined energies mean that the positive or negative actions of one person can affect the other, creating a shared karmic journey. And so this is why it's important that if you're not going to be with a person, if you have walked away from a person, if you're not having anything to do with a person, you want to find a way to sever the soul tie. You want a way to find a way to cut the cord because you don't want to be in a situation where you're sharing somebody else's baggage. Um, why is it important not to have sex uh, before marriage in terms of soul ties? Well, number one, you have emotional protection. You want to avoid premarital sex because it helps prevent, prevent the form of deep emotional bonds that can complicate future relationships. You know, why go into future relationships carrying baggage from old relationships? Number two, spiritual integrity. Uh, maintaining spiritual purity and focusing on committed relationship before engaging in sex is important. It is something that we should consider. Number three, reduce regret and guilt. Less chance of feeling regretful or guilty about forming soul ties with someone who is not a lifelong partner. This is a, a case in which having casual sex can really lead to a lot of chaos and trouble. Clearer judgment. You want to be able to make relationship decisions based on compatibility and shared values rather than emotional and physical attachment. Some people may find that they have great sex with one another, but they have nothing in common, and that is an issue. Stable foundation. You want to build a relationship based on mutual respect and commitment before adding the complexity of a sexual bond, because once it doesn't work out, you're still going to have some connections to this person for some time unless you find a way to cut the cord. By understanding the, dynam the dynamics of soul ties and their potential impacts, individuals can make informed decisions about their relationships and their emotional attachments and investments. This awareness can help to maintain emotional and spiritual health. Ultimately, this leads to foster healthier and more fulfilling connections, ones that are equally yoked and that involve lasting love. Again, you know, to give the example of the person who runs around uh, forming emotional connections with other people um, without really thinking about the consequences of that when they fall out of sorts with that person, particularly if the person is just having a lot of one-night stands, this can create a lot of karma, this can lead to a loss of identity, this can lead to um, just a lot of disruption, emotional imbalance, and even a, um, a really, really... Um, bad sense of having a load of karma on you that is being dumped on you by a whole bunch of other people who are doing things to earn this negative karma. So you really don't want to go around and just, you know, be with everyone in town because you don't know what their karma might be and the things that they've done. And then you have to now help to pay that off. I hope this has been helpful. If you're new here, uh, you're welcome. This is a safe space. If you're returning, I'm glad for your support. You helped the channel. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Take care of yourself this Friday, July 12, 2024. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.